Hi everyone, Dave here at East Rosebud Fly and Tackle, Billings, Montana. Today I'm going to tie for you an old favorite, Fox Squirrel Nymph. This is basically all made out of Fox Squirrel. I'll show you my hide here. You can tie them simple with no bead, with no flashback. You can tie them with the bead and the flashback. Or you can tie a soft hackle like this. Fox squirrel is an interesting color. It's a really a, a fish getting color and it's a different color than a pheasant tail nymph which is typically a dark brown, a hare's ear which is typically much lighter. The fox squirrel is kind of in between as far as color. So it can imitate a lot of different other mayfly nymphs and even caddisfly larva that you can't do as well with the other standard nymphs. It's an easy pattern to tie and I'm going to go ahead and load this one up with a bead head and a little bit of flashback on the thorax. I'm just using a standard nymph hook, 1x long, 1x strong. This is a size 14. Of course you can tie these up larger or smaller. I'm just going to use a short section here of uh, 0 .15, 0 .015 lead wire. Not only to give a little weight but to help anchor that bead in place. So just four or five wraps. And then we'll pack that in and get it slid up into the bead. If I can find it. All right, now this is a full fox squirrel hide. I like it because it has lots of different colorations on the edges, plus you can tie an awful lot of flies with it. But to get the good barring, I'm going to tie the tail in with the edge of this next section so we get some good barring on the tail. And then I'm simply going to take some of this off and make dubbing for the rest of the body. It's got lots of guard hairs in it. It's a very buggy skin. Of course, you can buy squirrel hair already packaged, cut up for you in lots of different colors. So we've got a little bit of lead wire there. Get our beads set. It starts thread here. This is just 6-0 Oh, Vivas. And actually the original hare's ear nymph is tied the same way by taking a small section of hide, pulling out some of the under fur, and you have a short, very tufted type of tail on there. So I'm just going to cut out a very small section like this, take a little bit of the under fur out just to tidy it up a little bit and reduce the bulk. I'm going to tie this no more than hook shank in length, even a little bit shorter. Don't worry if you've got a couple of wild hairs, that's what makes this nip so buggy. Tie that in right up on top of the hook shank like so. Trim this off a little bit. Bring that forward. All right, we are going to use a wire rib on this for a segmentation and also to help protect the body itself. This is small gold wire. I'm going to tie it on the far side of the hook shank. So I get my so we'll put the butt end right up against the base of the lid. Grab back the end of the hook shank, and then we'll come forward a couple of wraps here before we dub. And again, you can take some hair anywhere off the hide. It kind of depends on how dark or how light you want the body. Let's go ahead and make this a little lighter colored for some contrast. I'm just going to take some hair off what would be the, the chin of the squirrel. It's a, almost a peach colored. And I'm simply going to get a small bit here. And just mix it up a little bit. As 
a lot of spiky guard hairs in it. Trap air bubbles, give you some movement. And again, the color is up to you. It depends on where you select the hair from the hide. Wrap back so that our dubbing starts right where we want it to. And I like a nice buggy abdomen on this. right behind the lid and then simply wrap our wire forward four or five wraps to where the thread is hanging a couple of tight wraps and then we'll break it off Alright, a common mistake people do when they're tying nymphs with a wing case on it, you have to bring your thread back to about mid shank before you tie in your wing case. If not, in our wing case, and this is going to be a Mirage Flasher Boot or Mirage, Open Mirage Tinsel, if you don't bring your thread back over the abdomen when you tie in your wing case and you bring it forward, you're going to have a gap between the back of the wing case and the abdomen. Always bring your thread back over the abdomen before you tie in your wing case. I'm just going to use a piece of medium width Opal Mirage tinsel for our flashback. Put the butt of this right behind the bead. Keep it on top of the hook. Right over the back of the bead. And we'll dub the thorax a little bit darker than we did the abdomen. Simply a matter of selecting fur from a slightly different part of the hide. In this case, to keep this thorax nice and buggy, I'm going to take off this darker under fur. And I'm going to dub back to the wing case and then I'm going to dub back forward as well. Increase the diameter of the thorax as it should be. It will also allow us to get a few more of these nice guard hairs entrapped in that. Of course the more guard hairs there are is in a dubbing, the harder it is to dub. Simply have to put more pressure on it. Wrap this back, make sure we're at the origin of the wing case. And we want to end up, if possible, with bare thread right behind the bead. You can see how spiky this dubbing is. Simply going to bring our flash back forward, keep it centered. Tie it behind the bead. I like to fold this material back and make a wrap or two over it. It helps to keep it from pulling out. Then we'll just pick this dubbing out a little bit. If you haven't tried a squirrel red squirrel nymph, you really should give it a try. Like I say, it gives you a little different color than you get with the standard hare's ear and pheasant tails. You can vary the color like I did here with a light abdomen. This looks to me a lot like a March Brown nymph, kind of flattened and with this weight. You can throw it right up in the riffles and drag it down into the head of the pool. So there's your fox squirrel nymph. Give it a try. Thanks for joining us. As always, if you have any questions or comments, you know how to contact us. See you next time.